Hi everyone, this is the Millimeter Wave Group and we're going to be talking about, um, about uh, the R&D portion for uh, Millimeter Wave, mostly looking at the robustness that we get from Millimeter Wave communications. Uh, so, so to start this off, um, we all know that uh, people are looking at Millimeter Wave for huge capacity, high offload, like fiber-like uh, type of speeds in the gigabits per second. So, and that's one of the pushing needs for Millimeter Wave. So as we go to higher higher spectrum, you can actually get more bandwidth, and with, with bigger bandwidths, you get this fiber-like um, throughput. Um, we need this for, for example, if you're in a venue, in a stadium-like venue, when you need huge capacity, these are the kind of deployments we're looking at, those four places where you would need maybe an inter-site distance um, for base stations of like 100 to 200 meters. For, so for example, if you have one GMP in this campus, about 100 to 200 meters, you would have uh, you would be able to provide um, significant um, capacity from the memory. And also things like um, people look at IoT type applications when you're looking into things like um, XR, VR, VR, and those require low latency. Those are the things you can also achieve with the applications that are best supported by the middle wave. And um, lastly, we have uh, the fact that you can have this um, huge uh, bandwidth um, at millimeter wave frequencies, we actually get smaller wavelengths, and therefore we can pack a lot of multiple antennas into a small um, space. It, because of that, we can also get bigger gains with capacity. So overall, you're getting capacity increase from bandwidth, you're getting from antennas. We, and the, if you look at, in terms of the cost per bit that you would have, millimeter wave, you, you actually drive that down compared to your LTE or even sub-6 type solutions. And there are a lot of, um, uh, so this work that we're showing here is actually done from six to seven years of this R&D. Um, there are a lot of challenges or you can call myths that we had at the beginning that we've shown that can actually be overcome. The first one here being the, the limited coverage. So for example, as you go to higher frequencies for millimeter wave, the signal dies faster and therefore people are thinking oh, we would only need this for small coverage because um, because of that, that path loss that we get. But with, um, and with the analog being formed, you will actually get a lot of gain. So once you go into you're using antennas that it can actually be formed, you get greater gain and that actually gives you more distance. So the limited coverage that we were expecting could actually go beyond that, and that's not a limitation for us with the limited wave. Another thing is the line of sight. So you go to higher frequencies, like I said, signal dies faster, people think you always need line of sight. But what we'll show you from this demo is that even when you don't have line of sight, due to reflections that you get, due to the ability to be able to stare your beams to actually a good place where you can get good signals, um, you actually do not necessarily need that line of sight for communication. You can actually get good communication without line of sight um, path. Another thing is also the fixed wireless. So millimeter wave has been used previously for backhaul type communication. So people used to use a fixed wireless point of view. Here we're saying that even on the handset where it's not fixed, in the communication between the handset and the base station, we can actually use millimeter wave and we will demonstrate that here also. And finally, the RFIC. So like I said, in millimeter wave, we're going to 400, 800 megahertz um, bandwidth. And we have antennas, for example, on the handset, you can end up with maybe four to eight, even 32 antennas on the handset. And on the base station, we can go up to 256 antennas. So this RFIC speed we're thinking cannot be built, just the sheer complexity of the elements that we're putting there. But we'll show here, this is actually a remote radio head that has 256 antennas. This would be uh, belonging to a Gino B, and that is in this box right now. But if you look even into the femto cell, you end up in a small box with 256 antennas. So the RFIC limitations is actually not um, holding water anymore. So we're just showing here that um, from R&D to product, we're actually seeing that a lot of this myths that we have about millimeter wave actually has been overcome. And then um, in terms of um, the standardization for millimeter wave, this is done by the 3GPP organization. So there was a release 15, which is going into products right now. And now there are ongoing projects on release 16, which is the next features that we're expecting to come down to the product. And one of the big ones is actually called the integrated access and backhaul. And that's because now we have the access, um, the link between the, the cell phone and the base station is millimeter wave. Now we're now going to the backhaul, um, making that millimeter wave. So that we, in rural areas, you can actually have a full deployment with both access and, and also uh, the backhaul being millimeter wave. 
another um, deployment um, improvement that you are getting is also beam management. So we're talking about steering your beams to actually get the best signal for the for the handset. There are a lot of um, improvements going on in latency and robustness. So I have a dumb question on the beam stuff. I mean, is it physically moving? Is there like a little thing that physically? Yeah. Perfect question because that's exactly what we're demoing oh, here. Okay, fine. So you would see a demo of that. But just to answer your question, what happens is the the, the base station does have beams, uh, beams the UE, and the UE is also have its, its own receive beams. So in some ways, the, the UE tries to track, get the the, the right beam sent measurements in the network, and the network can tell it okay, this is the best beam you're seeing right now, so this is what you should align with. So the beams stay where they are, just you switch between beams. The Geno beam, beams stay where, where you can stay where, you, where it is. Right. We, here we have, I think, 16 beams were, um, from the Geno B. Right. We have eight on the azimuth and eight on the elevation. Um, we have the two angles, if you do it, we have two on this angle and then we have eight on the right. elevation. And you will see that those are fixed in yeah. our demo. So the, the, the antenna doesn't physically yeah. move around. What the UE would be the one tracking, you would see it on the handset. You would actually see the beams actually moving. The one being used by the UE to receive data from the network would actually, you would see that switching. So that, um, that we end the tune. Yeah. So this Gino be the same as that one? Yes, yeah, so this is actually exactly what's up there. We just actually, it's a remote radio head. Yeah, from the base. And then, just to finish this, on the release 17, there are also other features or projects that we uh, envision for the future, for the next release after release 16. And those include things like um, full duplex and also things like um, industrial IoT is actually becoming a, a huge application for the next wave. Especially if you start bringing things like VR, AR into industrial spaces, those will be type of applications that we need to start with. So now we'll go to the, to the demo. All right, let's move. Cool. Well, yeah, we are going to move, actually, uh, with, with this. So, um, yeah, I said this is exactly the same radio head than what we have there. And uh, I think you mentioned we have eight beams on uh, azimuth and two elevation levels. So the lower level beams that we see now, um, they are odd numbers. So we have beam IDs for each beam. And starting from like that end of the yard, it starts from one, three, five, and it ends up here. Like beam 15 would be covering us here. And this is basically where you see, right now we're on beam 13, um, changing 11, 13. This is what you see, we're on the, that's actually the wrong way around. It's down to up on that pole uh, where we are. So it's it's this way, but you see it changing a little bit which it goes through the engine. Uh, this one here shows the, the, uh, the UE beam, there's uh, three antenna modules. The green bar on the UE shows which module is in use. And in here, you also see like a heat map of the actual, when we're doing beam for me, where the energy is uh, going to. So even if we stay within one antenna element, you can see it kind of switching, it's doing beam forming on the, the antenna element itself. And that's within the phone? That's within the phone. Right? This is within the phone. And this is uh, in the, the base station. How many antenna modules? So the base station. No, in the oh, in the phone. Um, so it's got. We got uh, three modules. Three. Uh, yeah, and each each module has uh, multiple elements in them, and that's why we we can do beam forming on the uh, on the each module separately. So if I block, like I, I was blocking these two, and I'm staying on the one module, we can still see beam forming uh, happening there. Mm -hmm. It still moves. So it, it points oh, beam down or up or back or forward a little bit. So, so the green bar? Yeah, the green bar indicates so there's um, uh, one module, yeah. second module, and, and third then, module. Uh, and, and then the directionality of the beam is basically towards that way. Uh, well, you can, do, you can do, like, let's say if we're using this end here, uh -huh. we can do a beam form. We uh -huh. can do a narrow beam uh -huh. that way, or it can go down, down, down. Or we can we can steer it back. We're going to be be informing this way, or or that way. Okay. No, so so this diagram is not really tracking relative to your position. It's just tracking the, uh, the beams on, on currently fixed. Oh, this one. Yeah. So okay, let, let yeah, me that's show the you. beam out of this the is a bigger station. One, so I'll, I'll show it from here. So yeah, this is the UE uh, module that's in use. But this one, uh, this diagram here, that shows the radio head and which beam is in use from the radio head. So we, we always have a beam pair. Radio head has one beam this way and the UE has another beam that way. 
So the radio had uh, changes to being based on, on UE recording. Um, Transmit and receive. Yeah, correct. So the radio had uh, changes being based on uh, what UE reports. Hey, actually, I'm in beam number five, but beam number seven is better. Can you put me in beam number seven? Uh, so the node B can put the UE in beam number seven. But at the same time, UE can listen with its all beams, all modules, and figure out what's the best one to receive, that beam number five or beam number seven. Are these units um, both receive and send? Uh, these are receive and send. Right now we're doing only data on downlink. So I have a throughput here, it's like 77 megabits per second. We're not really interested in throughput in, in what we're doing here. In this test bed, the whole reason of putting this together is we're... If you want to see high throughput, you can go see commercial millimeter wave networks, they do it. We do uh, some throughput here and we're uh, concentrating on figuring out how to make this robust. Like, like we talked about, that was the challenging millimeter wave. How does that really work? So now, um, actually going to that more when we've gone through, okay, we can see the UE beams or UE antenna module, which one is in use, and then we can see which one of the node B beam is in use. We can take a little walk with this and kind of see how it follows. We can go like behind a corner, see, uh, or behind a tree, see um, like non-line of sight, what kind of performance we get. Um, so yeah, please. Follow me and uh, <laughs> <laughs> move around a little bit to see you. Yeah, yeah. We get away from our beam number 15. So if you see it here, it's it's kind of changing between it's getting bounces off the building. Uh, like 15 is now behind us. Now we're more like in beam number seven. <laughs> 